welcome to the fifth episode of the Oddment and Tweak Crochet Vlogcast, um, where I chat to you a bit about what kind of yarny things I've been up to in the past couple weeks. Usually it's mostly crochet, but today I have quite a bit of knitting to show you, and I'm excited about it. Um, my name is Sydney, and I am coming to you from my home in northeastern Pennsylvania. You can find me online as oddment.tweak on Instagram and oddmintweak, all one word, on Ravelry. You can also email me at sem.crochet at gmail.com and you can find links to those down in the description. So I guess, I guess we could just jump right into finished objects today. Um, I have, I have a couple, a couple crochet, a couple knitting, and okay. First of all, you saw me working on this a couple weeks ago, but I finished my Waru shawl by Addie Day Designs, and it is a monster. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to fit this in the, yep, there we go. Now, I can't even, here, that's how big it is. <laughs> it is gigantic. And I am so in love with it here. I, I found this fade in my stash and it just turned out so well. I could, let me tell you the deets. This top yarn is knitted wit. Oh, hold on. In the colorway, Acadia National Forest. Acadia National Park. Um, it's an 80-20 superwash merino and nylon blend. And it's a little bit thicker than the other two uh, yarns I used in this, but after I blocked it out, you, you can't even really tell. It's fine. Um, the second yarn I used in this, you could see it faded in here. That is Bay Street Yarns. Uh, it's a one-of-a-kind colorway in a 75-25 merino nylon blend. And this bottom yarn, the darker green here, the darker green and brown and whatnot, that is Black Cat Fibers, um, also a 75-25 merino and nylon blend in the colorway dirt nap got that yarn at the allentown fiber festival and i am so pleased with this um oh crud where's my here's my notebook i should have had that open and ready with all my notes in it <laughs> um let's see I used a five millimeter hook on this. I went up a hook size from what the pattern suggested. Um, you did one size for the like the double crochet rows, and then they, you have the single crochet rows between uh, like the rows of lace here, the mesh, and you're supposed to go up a hook size for that. So I used a 5.5 millimeter for that I believe and I went up a hook size because usually when I make shawls like this they come out really tight and even after blocking they're small and <laughs> I'm so happy I went up a hook size because this is this is a beast and it the fabric it made after blocking is it's just it drapes so lovely I love it I love that I'm able to Wear it over my shoulders like this. It's nice and cozy. I haven't really wanted to wear it yet because, well, first of all, it is so hot and muggy here in northeastern Pennsylvania right now that I, I want to cry. This is not my weather. I am fall and winter 100%, but it'll be nice for like, like cool summer nights you're wearing like a tank top or something you just wrap it around your shoulders and it'll be super nice for when it starts getting chilly again 
I'm already looking forward to it getting chilly again, and this is literally the first week it was actually hot. Um, what else can I say about this? Oh, I only used like half of these balls. I have, I have enough yarn literally to make another, like a, an entire shawl of this. I have like exactly 50 grams of this, a little over 50 grams of the black cat fibers, and then like 60 grams of the Bay Street yarns. I, I don't know if I want to make the same shawl or if I could find like another pattern, but there's so much left of them and they're beautiful. <sighs> I'm just gonna have to find something else, maybe something to match it, like a pair of mitts or like a, a hat pattern maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Alrighty, the second finished object I have here, I was not working on a few weeks ago. I just, I actually finished this in a couple days. Um, it is this little top I made for my daughter. I, this is, what? What uh, pattern is this? This is the Swaley Top by Hilda May of the Velvet Acorn. And it's just, it's just a cute little top. It fits her, kinda. I wanted to make it a little big because usually when I make my daughter clothes, she outgrows them in like a month. So I made the four five size of the pattern. And because I used the, the pattern called for a worsted weight yarn, and I wanted to use a DK because I have a ton of this um, paint box cotton DK yarn in my stash that I need to uh, whittle down a bit. Um, so I went up a hook size enough to like a uh, neat gauge. And then I did, like I said, I did the size larger if I were to make it for her to like fit in now I would have made a two three but I made the four five and I think it'll be like a cute little cover-up for the summer it's light enough and airy I okay so the pattern also I, I also made a bit of a modification the pattern wanted you to have this whole back open and then have buttons all down the back or no, you were supposed to seam it all the way up the back, but I didn't want to do that. So I just, until I hit the body, I, I did it like the pattern called, and then I switched to working in the round and you can see the seam here, the, the wandering diagonal seam, but I don't, I don't think it matters. And I put a little button on top so she could fit her big head in there she she fits in it just by pulling it over her now but if she gets any bigger she's gonna need we're gonna need to unbutton that to get it on her but it's cute um i'll try to pop in a picture of her wearing it in here if i could manage to get a picture of her wearing it she's she doesn't like getting her picture taken she doesn't like sitting still It's cute. I like it. I like the ruffles. And I like this little little bottom ruffle. Um, the colorways I used in this are, I think this was pistachio. Pistachio green. Let me come a little bit closer. Pistachio green. And then this bottom one is okay. So the website says light caramel like caramel caramel however you'd like to pronounce it but the label says light camel so one or the other i had i think i used about three quarters of a ball for this and then this bottom part i used like two maybe two and a half balls of yarn for this 
you end up with a lot of stitches because it like it increases and then this bottom ruffle I could have done it a little bit longer but I was running out of yarn and I was afraid I wouldn't make it around more times and also it was just a lot of stitches and I thought that that was fine um yeah so that'll be cute and I'll try to get a picture of her in that I just really love this shawl. It's so pretty. All right. Okay. That is all I have for crochet today. All right? <sighs> Moving on to my new obsession, knitting. Um, I literally have not put down my needles since the last time we talked. Um, except to finish my Waru, which I, I finished that weekend. I recorded on Saturday, and I think I finished this Sunday night and then blocked it, and it was done Monday morning, and it's just been sitting over here because I, I can't stop looking at it because I love it. I'm not going to stop talking about this shawl. I just keep getting glimpses of it in the camera, and it's just so pretty. I love it. Um, and then... After that, I immediately made this, and then I think I finished that, like, midweek? Like, by Thursday, maybe? And then I picked up my needles again and didn't stop until, well, I haven't stopped. I'm still working. Like, I just love it so much. Like, something finally clicked, and I'm able to knit now, and I love it. So last week, not last week, two weeks ago, I showed you this dishcloth. Um, it's super wonky. And I had started another one, but I scrapped that because I found another pattern and I only had one pair of needles. So that was from two weeks ago. I, I don't remember what I said this pattern was, but I'll pop it in the bottom. Here. Like, oh, I'll just put it there or there, wherever it ends up. Uh, <laughs> all of these that I'm about to show you, I was using uh, size 8 needles. Um, it's a 5 millimeter, which, yeah, 5 millimeter, size 8, like boy Walmart needles that I just had in my closet. Um, so after that, I, I wanted to purl. I wanted to learn how to purl continental because I have not, I've purled in the past, but it, I, have, I haven't since reteaching myself. And this is the, here we go, the learn to purl, I didn't, I didn't sew in the ends, but whatever. I'm actually, I'm having trouble knowing where to sew in the ends because I feel like it's so much easier to hide your ends in crochet, but it just comes out weird when I'm knitting. I'll figure it out. Um, yes, anyway, this is, these are all free um, patterns, by the way. This is the Learn to Pearl dishcloth uh, by Elizabeth May on Ravelry, and I made this in, do I have the, yes. This is Peaches and Cream in the Colorway Oasis. Um, my son came home from his father's house on Sunday morning on Mother's Day with a Mother's Day present for me, and it was two balls of this peaches and cream and I thought that was so sweet of him. Uh, I don't usually work with peaches and cream but this this actually came out surprisingly soft. I don't know if it was the stitch or if it was like I don't know. Sometimes I find with certain colors of like the um like the sugar and cream and peaches of cream some colors are softer than others. I don't know if that's like something in the dye or like how they're produced but like even like like this one 
is so much softer than this green one. This one is very, very scratchy, while this one is like super soft. I don't know, I don't know. It's gotta be something in the way they're produced or dyed or something. Um, but yeah, he came home with those for me and it was just super sweet because he knows his mama loves yarn. But I really liked this. Um, I, I figured out a way that works for me to purl. It might not be like the the best way or like the right way. I like, okay, I hold the yarn. I have, I like wrap it like that. And then I hold it like this when I'm knitting. And then I use this finger to like wrap the yarn around the, the needle to purl it. Um, I saw it somebody do it on a YouTube tutorial and that just looked like it would work for me and it did. Um, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out something easier, I'm sure, down the line, but regardless, I think these, the stitches aren't like super even, but they're fine. They're fine for a first attempt. I like it. It's cool. So that is the first dishcloth I made that week. And then after that, I wanted to do something other than a square, something a little different. So I made this one. This is the almost, the almost lost washcloth by Simply Notions. Um, and I used that green peaches and cream I just showed you in that's the colorway forest green. I use the same needles, the five millimeter size eight. And this is like, I don't know, it, it came out really cool. I was, I was happy. I was amazed that I could do something other than straight up squares. And yeah, it's fun. That's all I have to say about that one, I guess. And then after that, so I had like, like a quarter of a ball left of that um, paint box Iran, and I saw this pattern on Ravelry. I don't think I wrote it down. I'll I'll link to it. I'll put the name of this pattern here. It was a pattern for a scarf. Um, just like a simple one, I think it was like one row lace scarf, something like that. But I, I just wanted to try it out, see if I could do it. It had, I learned how to do yarn overs and knit two togethers. <laughs> and that's what that looks like. Still using my five, uh, maybe here, I'll hold it against me. No, that's not working. Whatever. It's pretty. And I used what was left of that ball. Maybe it was a little less than half a, not half, maybe like le less than like a quarter. There was, I don't know. I knew I wasn't gonna get a full scarf out of it. That's for sure. I just wanted to try out the stitch pattern because it looked like fun and it was. And I don't know what I'll do with this. Maybe I'll give it to my daughter to put like in her dollhouse she uses a lot of scraps of crochet and like just fabric that I have around the house and puts them in there for her dolls. But that could be, that could be something like a little blanket. Um, and the last one I have here, the last washcloth is, here we go. This is the Zick Stack dishcloth by Stacy. Winkle, Winklepleck, uh, for the Knit Picks website. They have, they have a ton of free dishcloth patterns that I, I kind of want to make my way through. They're, I think they're really good for like learning different techniques. Like, like look how cool this is. This is just knits and pearls making like this little zigzag pattern. That was fun, fun to do. Um, this actually came out pretty even there's like a couple spaces where like you could see 
my tension was off a little bit, but I like it a lot. Um, I used Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton for this. It's so soft, so, 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 so soft. This would be like a perfect like baby wish washcloth. Mm. Um, in the colorway pink, it didn't have a ball band on it. I just, it was just leftovers from whatever I was making with it. But I like it a lot. I'm gonna try a couple more of the Knit Picks um, dishcloths to learn new techniques. Like there was a, like a chevron one I wanted to do and a bunch of other ones I wanted to do. It's cute though, I like it. This worked up super quick too. Like I finished that in like a day and that, that may not seem like a fast amount of time for more experienced knitters, but I think I'm still a little bit slow, which is to be expected from a beginner. But I'm getting faster, I think. Um, and I guess that will bring us into my only work in progress right now. I don't have any crochet works in progress. Uh, just this shawl. Um, so last Saturday, I went to my local yarn store to look for, um, needles. I wanted to try the, uh, how do you pronounce it? Chiagu? Ch Chiagu needles? The red lace um, circular ones. Uh, I asked a bunch of people what they preferred and a lot of you said, uh, recommended the, the red lace interchangeables or circulars or whatever, but my yarn store did not have them. They had the, um, like the bamboo chayagu ones, but I, I've worked with um, like wooden needles before. Like I used to have a set of like the Knit Picks interchangeables um, when I used to knit or try to knit. I don't know, I, I got them with the intentions of learning to knit, but I never really did it. Um, but I didn't really like the wood, so I didn't get those. I also walked out of the store, that store without buying any yarn I didn't need, which was good. <laughs> I like supporting my local yarn store, don't get me wrong, but I do not need any more yarn. I <laughs> I had two skeins in my hand and I was halfway, halfway to the checkout counter before I turned to my husband and said, I need to get out of here before I uh, purchase something I don't need. So instead, um, last, Wednesday, like this past Wednesday, I ordered them. I ordered a pair of circulars online. I ordered two pairs of circulars on online. Um, I got, hold on, what size did I get? Where the, there we go. I was using it as a bookmark. I got 32 inch circulars. Um, in a size four, which is a 3.5 millimeter, got that. And I also got um, a pair of 16 inch circulars in a four millimeter size um, to make hats. I'd like to try and make a hat. I haven't started that yet, but I'm excited to. And I am so happy with these needles. Like I knew, I knew you guys wouldn't steer me wrong. Um, when I was using the, the Knit Picks ones, the cable like curled up into itself a lot, but these are so nice. Like I, hold on, I don't wanna show you what's on here yet, but like this cable is amazing. <laughs> like I have, I've run into no problems with it and the needles themselves, like the yarn just glides right off of them. I'm definitely, definitely going to be saving my pennies for a full set, maybe like in a month or so. 
maybe two months. They're expensive. Uh, but if I, if I buckle down and save, I think I could get a pair. And yep. Before I show you what's inside of here, I just wanted to show you this bag that came in yesterday. This bag is by Bandit Fiber Co. And Stacy worked with me to make this custom bag. I saw the fabric in uh, like on Instagram, like a previous post of hers paired, like the, the two fabrics paired together. And I messaged her to ask, she didn't have it in her Etsy shop. So I messaged her and asked if she had made anything with it and if she had any of that fabric left over. And she did, and she made me this beautiful bag. It's her medium size, and it has four huge pockets inside to stuff whatever you want. And it has this beautiful drawstring, and it's just, it's the perfect size. This bottom part, I think, is, um what do they call it, interfaced. So it's more solid, it has a nice square bottom, but the top is a little more like loosey-goosey. So you could roll it down and see what you're working on. I love it, I love it so much. Look how cute this fabric is. It's like little, little black cats and tarot cards. Just, I could have a little bit of Halloween all year round and I love it. Thank you so much, Stacy. You're probably not watching this, but whatever. Thank you anyway. I've already thanked her in real life. And by real life, I mean on Instagram. Uh, okay. So, oh, she also sent me this super cute. I think it's like, I think it's like one of those like uh, friendship bracelets but she put two super cute little progress keepers on here so I think I'm going to keep it as like a like a stitch marker holder I could hang it up somewhere it's cute and it's pretty thank you again Stacy and again that is bandit fiber co all right now I can show you what's in here and I am, I'm super, super proud of it. Um, I am using, let's see, Ethereal Fibers in the colorway, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. It's like a, it's supposed to, it says it's supposed to be a Christmas colorway, but I don't think it's like super Christmassy. It's like vintage Christmas with like muted pinks and greens and blues, I suppose. And this is on their Nebula Sock Base. It's an 80% Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon, 435 yards per 100 grams. And unfortunately, these this uh, particular dyer, I don't think is dying anymore. They, they're... Uh, Etsy shop is empty with a note saying that I forget exactly what it said, but it was something along the lines of they don't know when they're going to be like dying more yarn or if they're going to be dying more yarn, but it's really pretty and it's super soft and I like working with it. I think I got this in like, like somebody was having a D stash on Instagram like a year or maybe a year and a half ago and they had a bunch of skeins up for like $10. This is, whoops, this is beautiful. So I'm using that yarn and my 3.5 millimeter needles to make, hold on, it's very twisted. Didn't realize how twisted it would get, sorry. Um, let's see if I could spread it out a little bit. This is my Raina shawl by, I didn't look up who this was by. I'll put it here. I'll put who that was, who it was designed by. But this is a free pattern on Ravelry. 
and like 10,000 people have made it like there's 10,000 projects so I figured it was a good one to try out on and I am so happy with this it it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be I've got I've gotten like hung up on like this mesh part a few times where like here right here you could see this is like I screwed up I screwed up real bad over here right here like I, I dropped a bunch of stitches and then I had to like figure out how to get them back on which was a challenge I am so scared I, I hate dropping stitches so much I hate trying to fix things like like I don't know what I would do if I had to fix something a couple rows back I think I would just leave it and try to figure out how to fudge it and I don't I don't know how to fudge knitting yet how do you fudge knitting crochet is so easy to fudge Crochet is also like super easy to like rip back. You don't have to, oh, there's just so many like, there's so many stitches on here. And it gives me so much anxiety. Like, what do I do? What do I do with all this? Um, but aside from the anxiety, I am so happy with this. Um, I'm almost done with this garter section here. And then the next uh, like mesh section is going to be double this double the size of this one, which is intimidating. Um, I, I wanted to use this pattern because one of the, the podcasts I watch on here, uh, East Hook Crochet, she is also making a rain a shawl. And that made me, hers is beautiful. She's making it in this like, like this really deep, like purple, like aubergine color. And it's just, it's beautiful, but I didn't want to really, I mean, this yarn is beautiful, but I didn't really want it. Like I, I wouldn't mind using this yarn on a beginner project. Like it's not one of my favorites, if you know what I mean. Uh, but yes, East Hook Crochet is making a rain a shawl and that inspired me to start this one because it looked easy enough uh, for me anyway. I was, I don't know, I like it. I like it a lot. And I am in love with these needles, um, but I haven't been able to put this down. Like I just, I just wanna work on this. Um, I, I feel bad, as stupid as that sounds, uh, to not have like a current crochet project, but I think it's okay good to have new hobbies though I guess if I keep knitting I can't crawl this just a crochet podcast vlogcast whatever I call it I'll have to think of something else yarn I mean I'm just it's all yarn ever it's all the same yarn but yes, hopefully in a few weeks, maybe in a few weeks, I'll be done with this. I don't know. I might be slowed down a little bit by that giant mesh section that I, that's going to kill me. There's going to be two big mesh sections. It's going to be double this one and then double the double. So quadruple this, I guess. That's how that works. It's going to be really pretty when it's blocked out. I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. And I'm very happy working on it. I do want to start a new crochet project though. There is um, a crochet along starting June 1st from uh, that TL Yarn Crafts is putting or hosting. Um, it's like the shawl along and you just crochet one of her shawls. And I had actually picked up uh, two skeins of yarn to make her Coles River kerchief at the Allentown Fiber Festival. So I'll probably start that um, June 1st. So it could be part of the crochet along. Uh, let me show you the yarns I picked up for that. I talked about them, but they're by Barnyard Knits. 
in the colorway Honeycomb in her 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon base. Pretty. So I'll have at least one crochet work in progress. And oh, um, what's her name? I'm drawing a blank. Oh no. Uh, the Cozy Cottage Crochet podcast is also hosting a crochet along until I think she said until the end of July and it's just uh like a finish it finish it make along or the end of the whip there we go because it's like the end of the whip as we know it sorry <laughs> I'm sorry uh and that's just to finish a bunch of stuff and I showed you all of the abandoned works in progress I had so maybe I'll really buckle down and finish a couple of those after after I finish my Reina shawl um so I could finish that I could finish my Coles River kerchief I could I'll probably finish that pillow I showed you, the one with the uh, knit collage. Um, and we'll see what else. We'll see what else. I miss my hooks a little bit, but not too much. Um, anyway, so that was, that's my only work in progress, my only current work in progress. And I showed you one of my pieces of happy mail. Mm. Put that back in the bag in a second. Um, but I also received my May Total Geek Out Yarn Club from Dragon Horn Yarn, the one I said was inspired by Luna Lovegood. Uh, and here it is. And it's beautiful. Look at that purple mini skein. Now I... I think my favorite part of this is like these pops of green. There's like some there. There is, hmm, I thought I saw another spot. Guess not. Oh, up in here, the blue and the green. And this colorway is called Why I Wear Shoes to Bed. And this is on her Myth Fingering Weight base. Uh, the 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. And it's really pretty. I like it. I'm very happy. And now, and now I will be on a no yarn diet. Um, I really like looking at yarns like that. Like there's so many dyers out there who dye like Harry Potter colorways and I just, I like seeing the different, like, ways they interpret things into, like, yarn. Like, this one is inspired by Luna Lovegood. But then I also have that teeny button yarn inspired by Luna Lovegood. And look how different they are. And they're both so, so beautiful in their own way. But they're very, very different, and I love that. Like, look at that. They're so pretty. I love them. Alrighty. I think that's that's it for me today. Uh, thank you so much for watching and listening to me ramble on about my yarn. Um, I'll see you in a couple weeks. I hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend if you are in the United States. Um, and if not, I hope you have an awesome weekend. All right. See ya. Bye.